Yeah. What you talking about, fool? Hey, everyone. Sorry about that. That was my bro, Sanchez. I don't even know how that's going to sound recorded, but uh, it's probably pretty bad because I really haven't practiced doing an, an impression of that guy whatsoever. That's uh, attempt number one on that one. But uh, I'm just a small channel. Just a small channel. Just a small channel. I got, I got that one down pretty good. Not perfect, but... Her accent, there was just something about it that was just, you know, she was extremely ignoring, not ignoring, annoying. So this, this video is off to a, a great start here. <laughs> but uh, what I wanted to talk about in this video, it's been something that's been on my mind. In this, quote, community that I'm not part of and my channel's not part of, never called myself a, quote, truther. So when people say, hey, he claims to be a truther, where have I said that? I haven't said that in a single fucking video or comment or anywhere, ever, long before I had my YouTube channel. I always put it in quotations and I don't include myself because I don't want to group myself in with a bunch of fucking liars, idiots, uh, grifters, money grubbers, people with... Uh, they just have zero credibility left. They label others NPCs to try to dehumanize them. They do, all, do, they do all sorts of immoral, unethical things. They're felons. They're, they're just uh, two-faced. On and on. In many respects, a lot of the, quote, famous truthers are worse than normies that I could find just on my street in the fucking hood. All right? And I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. And there's, there's shady characters around here that you shouldn't trust with your fucking money or you know, walk out of here with too much money in your wallet, especially at night, you know, but uh, don't go out too late at night. We're not, you're, not in a, you're not in a safe place here. You're not in a safe space. You see what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, they're, they're just, they're, a lot of them are fucked up, so I'm not sure how I really got onto this quote truth or topic, but oh, I know what I was going to say. The whole point of this video is a lot of them will push false hope, and it's hopium. And then there's others that will say there's no hope. It's just hopeless. They're black-pilled. They say that, you know, we're trapped here forever. They push that nonsense, which doesn't make sense. And I'm going to explain why it doesn't make sense. Here's why it doesn't make sense. If there was no chance of you getting out, why are there so many guards? Why do they use so many tricks, deceptions in the news, in the media? All the media, all of it, is loaded with that stuff. It's loaded with deceptions and tricks. Why is this realm so full of illusions? Why do they have to do so much shit to keep you convinced that this is it? That you're small, that you're insignificant, that Earth is a spinning ball, which is wrong? You know, that there's going to be a pole shift and all this bullshit? They try to, they work pretty hard to convince you that there's fake space fake satellites, fake International Space Station, fake Hubble Telescope, fake Voyager, um, I could go on. It's beyond that, though. Look at the religions. How much do you do with that? Convince you of bullshit. They wouldn't have to do any of that if this was a lockdown where there's no chance of escape. If this was Alca Alcatraz on steroids and PCP to the exponent of a, of a billion or to infinity where it's like you got no chance, you know? Then we'd be gathered together as slaves, maybe with our heads hanging low saying, fuck, we're fucked, we can't, we can't get out of here. But you notice something. So that, notice this, for the people that say that are getting down or, or despairing or getting depressed, can you notice that I'm not a dummy? Can you at least notice that much? You, you can notice that if you're listening to my videos and, you, and you're not getting upset if this isn't your first video in the first, you know, two minutes or five minutes, you're already almost in tears and butthurt and ready to leave your first comment raging against me. If you're not one of those people, then you can tell, hey, he's not a dummy. So if you're saying, okay, Sanity Machine's not a dummy and he's not hopeless, 
he's not hopeless. And I never have been. There were times that I was, uh, I was uh, down more than I am now, for sure. Early 2000s, I, I really battled with depression. You know, after 9-11, right after that, basically. So, uh, and not just with that. I mean, I, I did get down initially about the soul trap topic. This would have been in 2016 or 2017. Something like that. It was around maybe 2016 is when I really started looking into it. And then around 2017 or 2018, I came up upon Dan's channel, Overwatch channel on YouTube. Wasn't really into his website um, for some reason. Sometimes when I find someone on YouTube, that's what I stay with. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but there's been a bunch of channels that they have websites and I've just been on their YouTube channel. I was that way with the Quantum Healing before I went on there and did my analysis. I was that way with Quantum of Conman channel years ago. I hadn't been on it. I was on his channel for years and I was not on his, I didn't check out his website. So I don't know if I'm lazy or if there's something about me that just doesn't do that. I love checking out other websites, but there's just something about me where if a YouTube channel says, oh, and I have a website, I don't know if, I don't know what it is, but I just don't end up going there to really check it out. Or sometimes it takes me weeks, months, years, in the case of some of them. So it's weird that way. Or I'm weird that way. I'm a bit you know, peculiar or uh, idiosyncratic is what a lot of people will say. I have my, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm strange in, the, in those ways. Not strange in a creepy way or a uh, creepy boy way or anything like that, but it just, uh, I'm, a, I'm a little bit quirky. I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little bit, cra I'm a little bit crazy. I'm just a, just a tiny bit crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm a lot crazy. I'm not going to minimize that. I am a lot crazy. But do I have hope? Back to full circle around, wrapping around to the original topic. Yes, I do. Why do I have hope? Well, why are they pulling so much shit where they're just like the, the little man, the Wizard of Oz, behind the curtain pulling all the levers, trying to make himself sound big and bad and unbeatable, indomitable, and scare, scare tactics. It's uh, fear, fear programming. They use that a lot. It's not just delusions. They, use, they do use trauma-based mind control and fear programming. Fear pro programming in fiction, science fiction, in the movies, the doomsday shit, all that, kind, all that stuff, all of it. Uh, TV shows and trauma-based mind control. You know, 2001, if you get what I mean. Playing that. All day long, for weeks and weeks, if not months, on TV. It's all over the media to make sure that that just burned into your consciousness and just hammered your heart and your spirit. Okay? I'm not an American, but I felt it. And I felt it very strongly. And I already knew about the New World Order before that event. Long before, a decade before that event. So it wasn't new to me, but it was, uh, it's devastating to people that care. It just, it, it can, that stuff, that kind of stuff is like, it's worse than poison. It's toxic to an empath and to any good spirits that have a spirit that can see, feel, you know, as I've said, I don't know what some of the creatures are here. They're not like me and I suspect they're not like you or not like us. Whether your spirit's like mine or not, I think there's differences. We might be from completely different places. I'm open to that possibility. I'm open to a lot of possibilities still. But when it comes to having real hope, yes, I do. Because there's a lot of things that indicate they're not all powerful. They got to do a lot of shit to keep us under mind control. Mind control would be completely unnecessary if this was just a lockdown prison with no means to get out, escape, whatever you want to call it, to get freedom. They don't have a lock on us. We're here right now. I'm not delusional. We're here temporarily. It feels like a prison. It feels worse than that in many respects. We don't get three meals a day, even though they get junk. They get, you know, awful fucking meals. 
just like you would in an asylum or psych ward. Don't ask me how I know. Don't ask me how I know that. Um, back to more serious topics here. It's in many respects worse than a prison, because if the prisons in certain countries, they usually don't torture the inmates. Once in a while, they do, and I am aware of that. That does occur, and it's disgusting. Especially, I mean, there's people in there that fucking stole something out of a store because they were hungry. You know, or something like that. But they didn't hurt someone. It wasn't, I mean, yeah, it's wrong to steal, but it's a difference between a real victim, a, cri a crime that has a real victim where someone is really harmed badly. And I don't mean armed robbery because you are harming the person. You're pulling a weapon on a store clerk. That has a victim. You just harmed, you traumatized that person. So anyone listening to this, don't ever do that. Don't ever do that. Even if you're hungry, if, even if you're homeless and starving, go ask someone for help. Try to use your intuition to find a good soul around you. You'd be surprised. Some won't just give you a little bit of pocket change. They may take you in somewhere and buy you a meal, a dinner, all right? That is possible in this realm, still. There are some good ones around. Try to find one. Don't harm someone. Don't traumatize someone. There are sometimes people on YouTube that are homeless or living in their car. Don't do stupid shit. Don't harm others. Don't harm others. I don't believe there's such a thing as, quote, karma the way it's portrayed. But I do also believe that <clears throat> sometimes someone comes along and there can be justice dealt out. Some of what I'm doing here, this might sound weird or incredible, but some of what I've been doing in recent weeks, I wouldn't call it payback or karma, but it's like just desserts for the narcissist, okay, that have harmed some people that I know to be good that I know to be good. That, I, that my current read on them is they're good spirits. They're real. They're not NPCs. They were treated like trash. They were harmed by some of these narcissists. And the ones that I've been showing, all of them, as far as I'm concerned, fit into the narc category on varying levels. They're not all the same type of narc. They're not all on the same level, the same degree but they are showing a lot of narcissistic behavior. Gaslighting behavior, trying to dehumanize me and others before me. They've done this before is what I'm saying. I heard about these characters. People have, you know, I've been hearing about these, these fucking creatures like Forever Con Man, for example. It's one example. And Lion Sword too, by the way, and others. So I'm not the first to... I might be exposing them. I might be the first in some cases on YouTube to be exposing them, but I've heard things about them in private. And it wasn't just rumors or gossip or somebody butthurt and saying, hey, I don't like them. It was deeper than that. It was, uh, it was more convincing to me of just rumors or gossip or slander. But anyway, I have real hope, and I want you to have real hope. So what's the difference between real hope and selling hopium? Well, hopium is more like the New Age shit. It's false hope. It's saying to you, here's the New Age, here's false hope or hopium. I call it hopium more than I say false hope. But I still say false hope once in a while. So basically, it's like they're gassing you up with false hope and saying, hey, hang in there. We volunteered to come here to fix this realm. We're making it better. We're raising the vibration. We're going to 5D. We're in 3D right now, but Earth is going to be in 5D, and it's all going to be better. It's all going to be wonderful. This is what they're saying, not me. Keep this in mind. The New Agers, and I've I just recorded um, a video. Haven't uploaded it yet. I've recorded a bunch of videos. Sometimes I go on a roll where I'll take a segment of five hours straight, and I'll just make a, two, three videos and work on them and hop around because I have to watch some of them first. 
a lot of times. A lot of times it's not just spontaneous. And sometimes they have so many videos that I try to pick out some that, you know, there might be some interesting moments or interesting things in them to analyze because some shit's pretty boring and it's not like I'm going to have you watching 10 minutes of my video going, the fuck did he record this for? And there's nothing to even really mention here that's interesting. So I do try to find what's interesting in their videos to analyze in the first place. So, you know, I do, I do that, but... Anyway, these New Agers that push the 5D, 5D, that's false hope. That's hopium, as far as I'm concerned. I don't see the signs that this place is going to be fixed. I don't think it can be fixed. I don't think it's just damaged. I don't think it's just broken. I think it's designed this way. So why do I think that? Why would I think that? Why would I think the opposite of some people that say it's just broken? society's broken or government's broken or this realm or we're harming nature look at the design of nature that's why i say this i have reasons for this look at the design of nature life eats life in some of the most horrendous cruel ways the most bloody cruel ways where animals are screaming out in pain as they're eaten they're not just killed and then eaten as food by the by the predators and they're prey animals. Imagine being a prey animal. Put yourself in that mindset. I don't mean like Howie with the blueberry. I don't mean go all blueberry boy and think, oh, what's it like to, you know. You can go that far, though, if you want to. And, you know, I, I, did, I do realize I made fun of him for the whole blueberry boy. It was comical. Okay, it was amusing. It was funny to see him saying he became a blueberry and all that stuff. Sometimes to empathize. Put yourself in the mindset of a rabbit, let's say. They're cute, but I mean a wild one, not a pet. Have you ever seen a rabbit outdoors, whether it's in the city, in a park, or on someone's lawn? They're looking around, they're skittish, they're very careful. What do you think that is? Or why do you think that is? But what do you think that behavior is about, is what I meant to say. Or a chipmunk, or a squirrel, or certain kinds of little birds. They're always looking around and, and jittery. They're jittery. They're anxious. Okay, they're not human beings, and I'm not putting human emotions or thoughts onto them, but they, they do seem nervous, anxious, worried about being eaten because they know they're not predators, and there are predators out there. They have instinct. If a hawk comes along or an owl, they know a rabbit knows that that can get them and kill them. Or a coyote, or a big dog, somebody's pet dog could kill a rabbit and eat it. And that happens all the time in nature, in the cities and in the country backyards or whatever. See what I'm saying? So the life of a rabbit would be a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Some people don't like this. Some have argued and said, well, that's just the city rabbits or the city squirrels. They're more anxious out in the country. There are less because they're less around less people. That's a small part of it. Good point. I'm not disagreeing completely. But are the, as I said to such people that live outside the city, are there predators out in the country? Or are they just carefree in their paradise so they don't have to worry about being caught, killed, eaten? Are there hawks? Are there eagles? Owls? God, red fox, maybe? Coyote? Wolves, some places? Wild dogs? That's just off the top of my head that a rabbit might have to worry about something being hungry. Or they could be a meal. And as I've said, they don't just die right away. It's not like just everything has this death blow doesn't work that way. I'm not laughing at the cruelty. I'm just laughing at the, the, the way that some people, especially vegans, vegans, well, we, the, they'll say, humans don't have great big carnivore teeth to eat meat. If you ever eaten raw, a raw steak, you don't need big carnivore. You don't need to have, if it's warm and it's a, fi a fine cut of meat, you can eat completely raw steak and it's not hard to chew. Cooking doesn't make it softer. That's a myth. 
You can eat it completely raw beef. I'm not kidding you. You can get that at a Vietnamese place. They'll slice up very thin, and it's raw beef. They call it rare, rare beef, or, but it's, it's raw. It's literally just raw meat. I'm not kidding you. If it's an authentic place, they will serve you that. You can get steak tartare, lots of places too. It's raw beef. It's raw ground, really, you know, it's usually supposed to be a, a good ground beef, but, or ground steak, but yeah, steak tartare. It's raw. I've seen people, I, I saw uh, German people eat this that I worked for when I was a young teenager working at a place. They loved it. They just reached their hand and they didn't just have some, you know. They do when they'd be cooking something. Anyway. No, we don't have great big, <coughs> excuse me, carnivore teeth. Have you seen the great big carnivore teeth on hippos and, and their, uh, you know, they're not meat eaters. They have 18 inch long carnivore, you know, canine teeth. They're not carnivores. Look at these big gorillas with their big fucking fangs. Think about it. Oh, well, they're not designed to eat meat, but they have these big teeth like that to kill with. So something designed them to kill, right? Look at the hyenas video that I did on here about nature. They're brutal, but it takes them a long time to kill something. They don't have that death blow because their teeth don't sink in deep enough to get to like a spine or a, a means of putting in the real death blow where one bite will kill. They don't have that one bite kill. Speaking about animals, YouTube, so hopefully they don't burn me for talking about that. People can argue all they want. They might have seen some videos, but yeah, a lot of slaughterhouses do use a bolt to the head. They're not all as cruel as the few videos you've seen, and those are bad places. I'm against those. I'm against cruelty against animals. I'm against factory farming. I'm against cruelty at slaughterhouses. I'm against abuse of animals at any of those places. It should be a painless end to them. Okay? I shouldn't have to say all this stuff, but it's just, it, you know, you, these days you have to say, there's always people like that that'll come along. Some of you are vegans. You're on pages of you, YouTubers' channels that, not pages, YouTubers' channels. You're friendly with them and their meat eaters, but just because I showed a steak, you say you're gone, you're, you're leaving my channel. Because I'm, I mean, because I showed it, took a picture of my food. That crosses the line by people. I mean, you're just fucked up, man. A lot of vegans are fucked. It's just the truth. They're mentally fucked up. They're mentally disturbed. And a lot of it is their diet and their ideology. And they become human haters. They, th they, they view some videos that are terrible, but then they, th they go too far and they basically paint all of humanity with a wide brush and group in all of us as, oh, you're all abusers and cruel to animals. Like, you're fucked up. You're mental. You're mental. You're mental the same way that, as women that do that, that are feminists, that have been hurt by one man, whether it was when they were a child or a teenager, or a boyfriend, when they were an adult or a young adult, when they weren't a child, and they had a bad boyfriend, an abusive boyfriend, in some way, whatever type of abuse, I can't n go into details about it because of YouTube. Otherwise, I would, because it's important. It's important to get to the truth of this stuff. But it's also risking my entire channel. So is it really worth it just to mention a couple sentences and then my channel with hundreds of videos gets shut down and gets shut down, sorry, and, and almost a thousand, clo closing in closer to 950 subscribers is just out of missing my channel. I should really put up a backup, but that's another story. But anyway, um, it's like when a woman that's a feminist has had, it tries to justify it as all men are bad and abusive because one man hurt her. Do you know how wrong that is? To project that onto that blame onto all men? 
That's one of the most toxic things that a woman can do. And it's so common now in our society. Not only so common, but accepted in the mainstream society, in the culture. It's just embedded where it's just like they're free to do that. Some man hurt them. It's like, what the fuck? And imagine if men did that. Oh, my goodness. If any men started doing that, society, pe women in society would throw a fucking massive fit. They'd be having strokes in the streets from meltdowns. If men suddenly blamed all women just because we had one bad experience or one abusive relationship or uh, trauma caused by a mother or an aunt or a grandmother that hit us or a teacher that was female that molested us or a female nurse or some woman did something. If we projected that onto all women, because almost all men, believe it or not, have been hurt in some way. The, the expression that some women use is, who hurt you? You could say, almost every man could say, we've all, we've all been hurt by a woman in our life. We just don't do what a lot of women do. We don't blame all women for it. We don't try to hurt all women and group all women in together if we ran into one bad one or two or three or 10 or 20. There are men, and this is common now, it's not just one bad woman. <clears throat> there are men in our society these days that every woman they've been around in their life in elementary school, throughout high school, has been bad to them and treated them poorly or been abusive outright physically or mentally, verbally, blamed them, blamed all men, blamed all boys, where their only experiences with women are bad. And they still don't hate all women and blame all women the way a lot of women do if one man was bad to them in their whole life. And I'm not justifying a man being bad to you. If anyone here had that happen to them, that's wrong. And I completely condemn the abuser. No matter what they did, whether it was a, a grape, soda, I'm sorry, I, I don't, I'm not putting it that way to, to put it lightly. It's because of YouTube. That's why. But if it's that type of crime, or whether it's physical violence, or nar narcissistic abuse, psychological abuse, gaslighting, all that stuff, threatening, holding hostage, and YouTube, I'm explaining something here. These are not, you know, I'm not discussing some crime, okay, right now. Fucking, they get, the YouTube AI gets confused, and they'll get, start giving me warnings or fucking strikes or something. It's bullshit. I've had videos that I tried to upload I could, that you haven't seen because they blocked the video due to copyright. Even though it's fair, I'm saying it's fair use. I'm giving breaks. I'm doing analysis. I'm doing. I'm following all the rules, and it doesn't get through. They prevent the upload when they do all their testing and checks, their YouTube checks that sometimes take longer than it does to upload the actual file. Fuck's sake! But anyway, anyway, that's wrong. It's wrong to abuse. So it was wrong for the women to be abused by the man. Whether it's a, you know, boyfriend, husband, father, uncle, whoever it is, stranger, some other family member, boyfriend, I don't know if I mentioned boyfriend, whoever it is, it's wrong. And I'm saying it's wrong. But what I'm adding on to that is what society doesn't tend to say. It is also wrong, especially if you're an adult. You made it to adulthood. You have to work on that. That's your responsibility. You have to work on it to the point where it's, wrong. it's also wrong for you to, to blame all men. That's not right. That's wrong to do. And boys. And to har harm boys for the crime that some man committed against you. That's wrong. Now, I want to show you how it's wrong. So you see it more clearly. How wrong would it be if a mother hit a son and that boy, as a boy, and he grew up to be a man and he just totally abused little girls? I'm still here, but I'm pausing so you give it a little bit of thought. That would be recognized as wrong immediately. Immediately. And you know it's true. There'd be no question. And yet it is allowed on a mass scale for millions of women 
in Western society, literally millions that are feminists, to abuse boys and men in all sorts of ways. And they just justify it as, well, they're damaged women. They got hurt by a man, by a man. That doesn't give you a right to harm all boys and men. Because a man, a single man, hurt you. He was wrong, but I didn't hurt you. I've had to say this to women. Do you realize this? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do you understand this? Because I've been looked upon on Facebook by women back when I was still on Facebook. And I've had to say to them, I didn't do that to you. When they, they're bashing all men, they're saying men are toxic, masculinity, all this stuff. And I said, I've had to say to them multiple, multiple times, I didn't hurt you. I've done nothing to you. Why are you attacking me? Why do you hate me? Why do you do that? I've, I haven't hurt you. I haven't done anything to you, ever. Be surprised. There's a lot of women that are like that. They have real deep psychological issues. If it was the other way, reverse things, and there were millions of men behaving that way towards girls and women, oh my gosh, it would be looked at entirely differently than the way society views this now. Night and day. It would be a rest like you wouldn't believe, for one thing. It wouldn't just be women condemning it in society or media condemning men doing that. There would be men arrested like wildfire. They'd have to be, like, it would just be so, so out of control. You think America has enough prisoners now in prisons? <laughs> it wouldn't, you'd, be, you'd have to be building prisons nonstop. The building of prisons would never end because they'd be getting locked up for doing what women are doing and women are not being locked up for this. Millions of women are harming boys and men. That if it was the other way around, men would be in prison for this shit. That's what I'm saying. Okay? You understand this? So anyway, uh, I don't know how I got on that topic, the feminist shit, but uh, it's mind control. It's a huge agenda. It's toxic. It's cancer. That's what it is. It comes from the top of the pyramid. Shake him ahead because it's no excuse. If some man harmed you to join a hate cult and harm every other boy and man and make the innocent pay that didn't harm you or anyone. Wrong on so many levels. I never want to do harm or falsely accuse anyone that is innocent. Girl or boy, man or woman, black or white or Hispanic or Asian. I don't want to harm someone that's innocent. I don't want to harm anyone who is innocent. Ever. Ever. I don't ever want to falsely accuse them or falsely imprison them, like lead them to be put in a fucking cage as a criminal when they're innocent. You know? But anyway, the whole hopium thing is based on wishful thinking, what sounds good, what sounds nice, what tickles your ears and feels good. And it's like, oh, love and light. We're headed towards 5D and all this shit that they preach. That's harmful. It's false hope. It's just, it's just like it hurts more when someone's dying and there's people in denial trying to pump you full of false hope. They're going to be okay, they're telling you. And you know, you know in your mind and heart they're dying. They're not going to be. You're losing them. And I'm talking about many, long before you heard about the soul trap and realized completely that this is a hell realm. And you just, you, just, you know, you're attached to this person, this relative, or this loved one. And someone's giving you false hope. And, you, and let's say you buy it for days and you have this false hope that they're going to get better or it's your pet and you think your pet's going to recover. You're getting false hope. You're getting hopium. And then it gets worse and worse and worse. And it's just torture because you're trying to hang on to that hopium. It's more painful. It makes it hurt more. I would not do that to you. Do you understand? I would, whoever's listening to this, 
whether you're a friend of mine, someone that talks to me in email or and stuff like that, or or let's say you're not very close, but you just enjoy my channel. I would not do that to you. I would not give you that false hope to hurt you like that. I try to, I've, I'm almost, I'm not laughing, but I'm just like, because I, I try to be so aware of that as one thing. I try not to get, in real life, I try not to give people false hope. If I don't have real hope for them, I'll try to figure out a solution to help them. But I won't mislead them with false hope. I won't tell you everything's going to be okay if we're in a real bad situation. I'll be trying to working, trying to make it better rather than giving you false hope. That's the way I do things. That's my approach. And that's my approach here on my channel too. On, you know, just a small channel. I don't know what state she's from, but that, that accent, man, there's something about it that it's, uh, it's addictive. It's not that I like it. I don't even like it really. It's just striking in a way. And I don't know, it's just something about her that I got hooked on that. Cause it was just like, I don't give a shit if you're just a small channel. I'll analyze your channel. Uh, you know, she's still pushing a bunch of shit, of course. I can't watch her content, though. I can only watch 30 seconds a minute, maybe two minutes. And I'm just like, that's it. I'm done. I got to watch something else. This is just too painful to watch. It really is. Her playing the psychic and, you know, treating this, play, this realm like, oh, well, the shit's going to hit the fan. Well, so be it, lady. So be it. The shit hits the fan here. What are these, like Lion Sword thinking about the shit hitting the fan and being a prepper? Well, bring it on. I don't believe that nukes are real. I, I have enough evidence to show that that's a PSYOP. So I'm going to use this as an example. And I used it, I, I, I can go back to high school where this came up in high school. I was in ninth or 10th grade. We were talking, a bunch of us guys were talking at lunch hour. And uh, I was talking with some dorks too, some computer nerds basically. And I was one of the coolest of them. I was, I, I was one of the cooler ones, or the, the leader in a sense. I don't know if you can imagine that, but I was like grunge looking and long hair, but I was into computers at the same time. So it's kind of a mixture of being into rock and punk music and grunge music and having that kind of look and that kind of lifestyle and, you know, smoking cigarettes and all that kind of stuff in, in, in that era. But, um, was also into computers, but the topic came up about a nuclear war. And if there was a strike on the closest major city or the closest nuclear power plant, they announced that a, a nuke was headed towards there. I said I would drive that direction. I would be driving to there. And everybody looked except for one guy. One guy understood. But everyone else looked like, what the fuck? You wouldn't be driving in the other direction to get away from the nuke? I said, no, I wouldn't want to go away from it. Oh, what are you talking about? You'd be incinerated. Exactly. Exactly. That was my thought process as a, as a young teenager where I was thinking I wouldn't want to live and survive in a, in a fucking radiated realm and just have radiation sickness and everything's fucking destroyed and the food's racked in the soil and everything that they said back in those days. I don't buy it now. Okay? That's not the point. But back then I said I would drive towards it. So that's the point there. I hope I made a point. I, ho I hope I'm making some sense in this video. Um, oh, my point would be the preppers and uh, lion sword and those types. And oh, if the shit hits the fan, have a ten thousand or twenty-five thousand dollar, whatever it was. I can't remember if it was ten, twenty-five thousand saved. You got to have this for emergency. You should be able to pack up and leave all, take all your stuff in your truck whenever you want, like I can. And I don't have can do this in an emergency and go here and go there. Well, what are you running from, dude? What are you scared of? You scared of D-E-A-T-H? You scared of leaving the body, kicking the bucket? You know? I don't get you, man. I don't get you. So you, you're, you're like a prepper that's afraid to, you know, leave this realm, let's say. Why? It's like a homesteader said to me earlier, oh, you're just blanket statement, you're grouping us all, and he got all butthurt in a comment. And, and then I said, you're being rude, because he was saying I was ignorant, he was saying 
you're this, you're that, you're this, you're not wise, you're and, you know, a wise man doesn't do this and doesn't do that. And blah. It's like I know what you're impl implying. You're saying that I'm none of those things. It's your first comment on my channel. You nitpicked one thing out of a whole video that wasn't about homesteaders. It wasn't about preppers. It was just about something, and I happened to mention that for two minutes or a few minutes, and uh, I don't know how many minutes exactly, but nitpicked that out, and, and then he said at one point, towards the end of his long comment, long rambling comment and I'm a prepper or, or no and I'm a homesteader well yeah I can tell that it hit you personally and I said to him don't take it personally he said I'm not taking it personally well then why did you respond to the part about homesteader because you're a homesteader you didn't like what, what I said that you're running away from evil you can never have true freedom in this realm they can still poison your air they still control this whole realm no matter what you do. And you might have to go completely psychotic and delusional if shit hits the fan and everything's destroyed. And you have, might have to deal with, yeah, billions are dead around me and I'm still alive here. And I did everything to hang on as long as I can. I wanna, I'm so attached to this hell realm that I want to stay here forever even if everything is burnt. Excuse me. Everything is burnt like a crisp and uh, they've just devastated the earth, but you're, you're good, you're, you're all good, you know? Just like a movie where <laughs> humanity's all gone and you're the last ones on earth. Thumbs up, well done. You hung on. For what sake? <laughs> what's, the, what's the point of that? Is what I, I'm wondering. I'm not telling you to do anything, I'm just wondering. What is the point of... Oh, like, do you get a cookie at the end that you're the, you survived, you're the last three people or the last family on earth? Did you, what are you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, you're homesteaders, preppers, you did it all. You, you stockpiled everything and you chose your land wisely and you have your own water supply. You have everything down pat where you're completely self-sufficient. You have a bunker, you know, you have uh, not just a bomb, like a bunker where you could live there for a year and be fine and just eat that fucking uh, survivalist food, the freeze-dried shit, and live off that and uh, live underground like a groundhog, essentially, and do anything to be attached to this place. Anything. Can you imagine if you got recycled back here after that? Because you're, you're so attached to this realm that one day when you do kick the bucket, that you're so attached to trying to survive and stay here forever through anything that you just keep recycling as one of the only ones on earth where you have forever and ever a lonely existence because you just keep, you know what I'm saying? You, you just get so attached to this realm and you'll do anything to stay here. Imagine that where... All that the entities have left is you. Wouldn't that be fucked up? I'm just giving Twilight Zone type scenarios or Black Mirror, I believe. A Netflix series, I think. So, I'm not going to mention who that I know told me about it. It's not on YouTube. But um, I watched that a few years ago. I believe it was on Netflix. That series. But I think the Twilight Zone was better done in many ways. To be honest, the original Black and Whites certain shows like that, and Outer Limits was good sometimes too. But I like the Twilight Zone better, to be honest. The black and white original series was, some of those episodes were freaking brilliant. Just brilliant. Do I think they contain some evil shit and programming too in them? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I proved it. I made a video showing part of an episode from Twilight Zone, and there's more in there. If I went through all those, if I went through them all, there'd be more in there, just like I enjoyed Star Trek, the original series from the 60s, in reruns when I was young. And uh, once you mature and you see the new world, new world Order for what it is, the New World Order is right in Star Trek. It's right in there. And Gene Roddenberry was connected with it, okay? He was part of the club. He was a club member. No, not a hair club for men member, but a Club 33, you know, Disney type Club 33 member. That's what I'm talking about. Connected with the alphabet agencies, connected with Freemasonry, all that shit. 
all of it, probably the Rosicrucians and everything else, because he was into that, the Kabbalah, you know, he was most likely a Kabbalist because of Spock and Vulcan and what was in there. That's, that's all part of the Kabbalah and that type of shit. Jewish, I shouldn't have said that, mysticism. Fuck. <laughs> I, hope, I hope they don't burn me just for saying that word one time. Or I'm not attacking them. I'm not attacking them. Okay, YouTube? I'm not attacking them, that group. Don't be so sensitive. But, but, as Matt McKinley would always say, Humpty Dumpty. Guys, don't call me, don't call me Humpty Dumpty. Humpty Dumpty. He started making videos about Humpty Dumpty and then when Bro Sanchez talked about Humpty Dumpty in that other video that I did, I just about lost it. It's just like, fuck, this is just too, too hilarious, just too perfect. There's certain times when things are too perfect. Chiron last, when he started talking to that guy about, <laughs> about boners and masturbation and everything. It was just, oh man. It was comedy that, uh, that I probably could have written for him and would have wanted to make him say to sound hilarious. And he just, he did that on his own out of the blue. It was just, it was too fucking funny. There was just too much in there. I just lost it. And I've had a big impact on him. And somebody just wrote a comment earlier agreeing with me saying that it is Chiron 3.0. This is version 3 of Chiron. I've made that much of a change to him. There was the original Chiron many years ago, seven years ago or more. Then there was a version of Chiron that came back after a long disappearance that's different. And then this new Chiron, after the impact I've made on him, he's obviously he watched the videos that Timmy the toothpaste eater showed him, told him about, that I made. And he made all these adjustments. So this is Chiron version 3, 3.0. So... I get a kick out of that. I really do. I get a kick out of it. Like when I called some, some ginger, you know, Jabba the Gingy and fatty and all this stuff. And then he did intermittent fasting and lost 50 pounds. He's thinner. Good for you. He you changed your weight, your diet and everything. I do believe that I have an impact on people. I don't even like that character. So, but do I have an impact on them? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Had an impact on Lion Sword. He's been coming over to my channel, obviously, taking things here and there like a magpie and then talking about them. So is Matt McKinley with suffering. Stuff like that. That's what they do. If I mention certain things that are unique about the soul track trap that I came up with that are my original idea, a week, two weeks, whenever from now, it'll be there. Guaranteed. It's what they do. That's what they do. They go here and there looking for, just like a magpie, magpie, and they just take stuff from here and there, stealing from here and there. Nothing against magpies, though. I like them more than I like these truther grifters. That's for damn sure. Mag, magpies are part of the uh, crow family. Corvid, not COVID. Corvid, Corvid, crows. Cube. Ravens and crows speak to me. They speak to me. And I like them. I like them a lot. They're intelligent. Ravens can perform tasks that a seven year old child can do. They're at that level with certain, certain uh, complex tasks things that they can carry in their beak and move and do. They're pretty amazing. They grieve their dead. They have funerals for them. They literally have funerals. They're amazing. That's the part that's tough sometimes. Get what I mean? I don't know if you get what I mean. I'm going to have to talk about it 
but I'm going to have to end this video soon. So I'm going to try to make this kind of short. That's a difficult part of this realm. Because ravens are amazing. So are wolves. So are many other things. Giraffes, tigers, whales, dolphins, seahorses, starfish. I mean, I can go on and on, on and on. Zebras. Elephants. There are amazing creatures here. Ravens, crows, hawks, eagles, owls. I love owls. And I realize they're used as symbols. That doesn't mean that I can't love owls. I love them since a child, and I'll never stop. They're freaking amazing. They're so cool what they can do, how they can glide without even making a sound. They've tried to study their flight patterns and their wings, the way they can not just glide, but they can, they can, they're so silent. They're just incredible the way they can fly. They're incredible what they can do with turning their head almost like all the way around. They're just incredible birds. Their vision at night, the night vision, the owl eyes, they're just awesome. They look beautiful. They just look, they look beautiful and they look like you could, I just love to pet their feathers and, you know, have a little owlet. They're just beautiful. They're cute. They're sweet. They're amazing. Could you not love owls? What I'm saying is what's difficult is what created this fucking realm? How did they create beautiful things? But they created massive, massive suffering by design and torture and disease and earthquakes, and hurricanes, and it's just deformities in children, children that are born to suffer from, uh, it's just, it's so heartbreaking, and yet the, the same creator, the evil fucking creature, whatever the monster is, was able to create owls, and elephants, and, you know, tigers, and lions, and wolves, and bears, and deer, and rabbits, and just, you know, I can go on and on and on. All the types of birds, hummingbirds, are incredible. Their design, the way they can fly and hover, they're so beautiful, but they're also designed almost to be, like, they struggle to survive. They barely make it sometimes to get nectar before dying because they use so much energy to fly that way with their wings. They burn so much energy. So. And it's all that way. It's just like so much beauty, but it's designed to be such a struggle and so much brutality and cruelty and life eating life. It's just, it's fucked up. It's the most fucked up thing. To think about well maybe not the most fucked up but you know what i'm talking about it's up there it's in the top 10 maybe at least for me maybe it's top 20 for you i don't know but you get my point if you can see the beauty pick your favorite whether it's a giraffe an elephant of wildlife it could be a tiger it could be white tigers in particular you might find them the most beautiful and just love them or it could be elephants for some people. They could love elephants, or they could love giraffes, or like me, they could love wolves. Always kind of thought of myself as a lone wolf. It's like an archetype for me since I was a child. I would sneak into a zoo, the back, through the forest, through a path that wasn't really much of a path. I would risk getting poison ivy, which I was highly allergic to as a kid. I would risk getting that to go visit the wolves the very back of the zoo, sneak in the very back. Nobody was there. Country place. And I could sneak in. 
as a little kid, talking about four, five, six years old, I would go there through the forest and visit the wolves on my own and go and watch them. Somehow I imagine there must have been a double fence, but a fence, then space, then their fence, because you couldn't just go up and pet them, obviously. But from, as a little kid, remembering back then, I could get pretty close to them. And they were out there. And uh, I would go there and, and just talk to them. I didn't think I was a wolf, but I would speak to them. Just the way I would speak to a pet dog. I realize they're different. I'm not delusional. And uh, anyway, I do find them beautiful. And I do enjoy the wildness of a wolf. And, uh, the fierceness. And I get that way sometimes, so I kind of relate. Where I almost do bare my teeth and, you know snarl at people in a sense. I don't do that often, but I couldn't get to that point where especially if somebody is harming someone that I care about and I witness that, I just happen upon the scene of that happening, then there's hell to pay. Because I can be extremely I can be extremely protective. Let's put it that way. But um my point on that is magnificent beauty, the glorious beauty of nature, wolves, or it could be tigers or elephants or giraffes or rhinos. I find rhinos to be beautiful. I think they're pretty amazing. They have a unique look. I've always enjoyed them since, since I was a child, but I could enjoy other things like I enjoy seahorses, for example. I have since I was a young child reading. I had a subscription, subscription as a young boy to nature magazines to a few of them, and I love I loved those. So when people say, oh, you just don't like nature, I mean, dude, I was studying about, I was reading about nature when I was five, six, seven years old, getting magazines every month, and out in nature too, and out fishing, catching fish, um, out canoeing, out walking in the forests, out skating on the ice, frozen rivers in Canada. I mean, I was out doing stuff cross-country skiing. I even did a, I think it was, was it a 5 or 10K kilometer race? I did that as a kid, cross-country skiing. I was into all kinds of different things like that. Nature walks, nature hikes. Yeah, I just didn't like nature. I grew up in the country, and I had a cottage that was way out in the country, you know, by a huge lake, on the river, right on the river, so I boated. I would go swimming, boating, water skiing, canoeing, Fishing, doing all that stuff. All that stuff. Out swimming in the middle of the lake just to go for late nights or swim right around dusk, right when it's getting dark. All that stuff. I know a little bit about nature, okay? I'm not just some city kid that's never been outside the city and people just assume the weirdest shit on here. Well, you just say this about nature because you don't know anything about nature. Yeah, I know a little bit about nature. Just a little bit. You'd be surprised. Some of you might think, but hey, he just he doesn't seem like it on here. I didn't grow up in the city. So there you go. There you go. There's pictures of me holding up great big fish like 30 inch pike and stuff like that as a kid. So, anyway, my whole point is uh, nature can, and it's just weird that it's the same creator that made nature so beautiful yet so brutal and made things in nature that just look that way where you're just like, it's just, it's, uh, but you know, once you really look at it, like some people would say, would look at elephants and say they're just so gentle and soulful, but have you ever seen elephants attack other animals? I mean... They can, be, they can be a menace. They can be pretty violent. And I'm not talking about ones that were ever in the zoo 
ones that were just wild their whole life. They can terrorize other animals and people. They can rampage through a village and stuff like that and just... I know they look gentle. So do giraffes. And giraffes can fight other giraffes. I mean, it, it can all be violent towards each other and towards the young. I mean, so it's just... It's incredible that they can be designed to look so beautiful, so magnificent. And yet, just be the way, the other part of nature, the way it's designed. I mean, a, a fucking psychopath designed this realm beyond our imagination. Beyond anyone I've ever heard try to explain it. Because it, it doesn't add up for some <laughs> creature or collective or entity that's stable. Because the way this place is designed is... Uh, how can I put it? It'd be hard-pressed to find someone with a criminal creative imagination as bad as what created this realm in the worst criminal psych wards and asylums in this world. I mean, it's just, it's beyond that. It really is beyond that. And you think about it, I'm not kidding. You could go into those places and try to ask them for creative ideas for things that are both beautiful and, and brutal and destructive and evil, yet look beautiful. And I mean, what the way this place is designed is, it's evil genius in many ways. In many ways it is. I'm not giving it credit. It's just the way it is. I can go back to the owl example. Just look at them. Look at the softness of those feathers and the way that they are and the way that they look and their gaze and everything. Their, the gaze of their eyes is a G-A-Z-E. I'm not talking about the other namas gaze, okay? I'm talking about the way their eyes look, owl eyes. They're freaking amazing creatures, even if they're not your favorite. They don't have to be. Just do a little bit, watch them, watch some videos. They're freaking incredible. Snowy white owls, barn owls, all types of owls. They're just incredible creatures. But the same thing that designed owls designed all the animals to be ripped apart in nature and, and us to not even fit in nature. Don't wear clothing. Try that. Go out in nature without any clothes, without any survival equipment, without a tent, without a knife, without matches, waterproof matches, or any, any flint or any way to make fire. Um, go out there without any twine, without any, you know, any supplies anything to purify your water, any pots or pans to cook with. Go out there just like an animal that's dropped out in the wilderness. You will survive. You sure won't in Canada, in the wilderness. There's all kinds of... There's wilderness in the northern parts of Canada where you could be dropped in the woods and you'd be walking 200 miles trying to trying to fucking get to the nearest smallest little town you just surrounded you'd be out in the woods and out in the elements and out in the snow and the cold and the rain and freezing rain and out with animals and you know bears and I mean you see what I'm saying so you get what I'm saying I hope so you're not designed to even survive in this realm, is what I'm saying. All the animals are designed way better to, to survive in nature than you are. From a grizzly bear to a, to a city dweller squirrel is designed better to live out in nature, outdoors, than you are. Whether it's a deer, or a rabbit, or a wolf, or a coyote, or an elephant, or whatever it is. Hippo. 
So if you get what I'm saying, we're a mismatch. Seem alien. Our bodies is what I'm talking about. We're not meant to survive out in the fucking wild. And it isn't just because we're spoiled with technology. I already know some people will try to use that mental gymnastics and use that excuse. We've just gotten spoiled. We've gotten easy lives, comfy lives. No. You can train for a decade as a survivalist, be the best in the world and not be comfy, and be training to live out there. There's places in this realm that if you're dropped off with no fucking clothing and no survival gear and you're a survivalist, you will be working your ass off every minute to even last two weeks and you'll be starving after two weeks from what you're trying to live on and survive on. You won't really be living. You'll be wasting away food-wise, energy-wise, not getting good sleep, worried, anxious, scared, cold a lot of times, or too hot, or getting sunburnt, all sorts of that stuff. Yeah. And if you tried that for years, you might never be warm for the whole time. You know what I mean? Eaten alive by mosquitoes. Tons of stuff can happen to you. You could be very sick from drinking water out in nature. Just drinking water. Rainwater. If you don't have a pot to put in a fire to boil the water over to purify it or anything to purify it with, you're going to be drinking fucking water out of a whatever water source you can get cupping your, in your hands and drinking it out of a small lake or a creek. Could be anything in there. Could get really sick really quick. You're not designed for nature, is my point. You're not designed for nature here. It'd be burnt to a crisp. Put an Irish person out the elements with no clothes in somewhere where it gets hot and sunny. They're going to be burnt. If you have pale skin, pale Irish skin, or your ginger skin, red skin, rather than pale white, red ginger skin, you're going to be so fucking sunburnt. So sunburnt. So then there's, there's, there might be, and this happens too, it's just ridiculous. I'm shaking my head as I'm about to say it could be black people here saying, see, you white people are not, it's just white people that are not designed for this realm, but black people are, because look at our skin. We've got darker skin. We don't get sunburned. You can get sunburned, by the way, black people, but we've got melanin, so we're designed better. Are you designed for the harsh cold here? No clothes in Canada in the wintertime? In the north? Good luck. You ever been to northern Manitoba or the Northwest Territories or the Yukon or northern Alberta? Do you know how fucking cold it gets? With the best clothing you can buy or find anywhere to get, and the best warmest boots, and the best gloves. I'm talking about expensive stuff. You can spend a lot of money. You can spend a lot. You can spend four or five hundred dollars on winter boots. Obviously, mine. I didn't pay that, but you can. I don't live in the coldest part of this country, for one thing, but. I've known people that lived in very cold northern parts of Canada and visited. And uh, yeah, it can, it can get brutal just in October and November, but way more in January, February, just brutal temperatures. So imagine having no clothing, not just clothes, but you got to bundle up and layer up in fleece and then jackets on top of that. Like you got to wear... Two, three tops plus a, a winter jacket when you're up there. Yeah, you got to bundle up. You know how fucking cold it gets? Northern Manitoba, the top part of the province. Windshields crack and break, not from being hit from the cold on people's trucks. They have places to plug in to warm up your vehicle. Everywhere. Like at hospitals, it's free just to plug in somewhere. 
because you have to to keep the the block of the vehicle the it has a heater block otherwise it'll crack it'll break your vehicle's wrecked then your engine's wrecked fucked you got to plug it in gets that cold so they have it set up that way where it's not just plugged in at your house which we have in certain other parts of canada people plug in their vehicles overnight at their house when it's cold a lot of times it's a canadian thing but up there, wherever you are, you get to plug it in. It's that cold. And the windshields can break. It's fucking crazy. So imagine being out in that with no clothing. Are you designed as an animal? Are you the same as a lynx, the Canadian lynx? And they're freaking beautiful. They're gorgeous and unique. Look that up. Google, uh, try that on Google Images. Up on the Google Images, as Jan Levi's would say. Man, I'm talking long. Some people say they like my longer videos, and this one is going long tonight. So I must have been in the mood for talking, but it is getting rather late. I'm going to go to sleep soon, and i got to get some stuff done tomorrow. But um, Canadian Lynx, or Canada Lynx, I believe it's called, rather than Canadian. I think they call it the Canada Lynx. And Lynx is L-Y-N-X. I believe, unless I'm so fucking sleepy that I can't spell. But I think it is. I hope I'm right on that. It's, uh, it's beautiful. Huge pause for the size of it. To just walk on top of the snow. It's almost like it has paws like snowshoes. In a sense. It doesn't look weird like snowshoes, but big paws for the size. They're just cool looking. They're just unique you have to see them. And the Arctic fox is another one. It's a white fox. It lives way up north in the Arctic. Beautiful. Just beautiful. I had a red fox walk by me one time on my porch where I used to live. At night, just walked right by. And I didn't move. I was just standing there still. And he looked right at me. He didn't just walk by. He turned and as he was walking by. And he was just like a foot or two off my porch, so close to my house. Just so close at night. Outside of the city. I didn't live in the city. Just incredible, though. Do I think that's just an AI? Or just an NPC? Or just a soulless creature? No, I don't. I could see that it was something, not just living, but something with a soul, a spirit, different than mine. I'm not saying we're the same thing, but just incredible. When you're that close to wildlife and, it's, and you're out in nature and it's not in a zoo, it's different. There's nothing separating you. Was I kind of startled? Yeah, for a second it was. I was never that close to a fox and I didn't realize how long their body is. They have such a long body. They're not big. They're not like a big, huge dog or something. But they're just cool. So there are cool creatures here. And there are evil creatures here. So it's like seeing both. It's like seeing... Whatever the fuck created this, it's just a, as I said earlier, evil genius. Some would, some would say that about me now that I think about some. Some recently have said that about me, trying to, to insult me, saying he's like some kind of mad evil genius. I'm flattered, okay? I'm flattered. You know, you, you can't hurt me by these strangers making these comments about me on other YouTube channels in the comments section. Sometimes somebody makes a video and I do a quick scroll down the comments and I'll recognize, I'll recognize some names, some creepy boys that I've done videos on commenting. Obviously, they're just happy to join in that, oh, someone else hates him too and they're making videos and they just love it, you know, the comment. So they love being in a group and group thinking all that stuff and ganging up, or whatever. But And there's some strangers that will leave comments and say, you know, that they agree with me and uh, they hate that. If you go on those channels and say you agree with me on anything, they just can't, they hate it. You mentioned the name, the sanity machine. 
and say that you agree with me on anything and they just they just fucking lose it they just lose it saying my channel's name triggers the shit out of them it really does it really does and it's hilarious to me i gotta admit it really is so so some might say that hey you're you're an evil genius I'm not offended by that. You can call me insane or the insanity machine. I'm flattered. I'm flattered, you fucking idiots. You know what? The ones that are making those videos, I'm saying. That's who I'm speaking about now. The YouTubers making videos calling me the insanity machine. I mean, that makes me laugh harder than... I can hardly contain myself right now just thinking about it, thinking about watching those videos when they first popped up and I saw the titles or, or heard what they were saying whether it's Lion Sword or, you know, uh, Big Gingy, Angry Gingy. You know, fucking hard, I laughed at that stuff. I mean, <laughs> it was just, it was, uh, it was like you gave me a gift, okay? That's what it was like. It was like I was having a rough day and you made something to cheer me up and make me laugh. You didn't hurt me. You made me freaking laugh so hard in some of those, especially the big Gingy video. I mean, with him pointing the finger and <laughs> whacking his finger. <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to redline my fucking volume, my audio again. It's <laughs> It'll make my microphone cut out. It, it was just so funny. You wagging your finger, that part was just comedy gold. That was gold, dude. That was, you, you couldn't have, you couldn't have scripted that any funny than that. Jesus Christ, you don't know how funny you are sometimes. If you could harness that, if you could harness that and write that, like be a, be a comedy writer, I'm not saying you'd be famous because it is a club. You have to join. You have to sell out and all that to be famous. But you could definitely do comedy and you could have the whole fucking room laughing if you did characters where you're, you were doing something like that. Your facial expressions, how angry you got, everything, everything was just hilarious. <laughs> it was just so fucking funny to me. It was so hilarious that uh, it was just beyond words. You wagging your finger, pointing your finger at me, and uh, the angry looks on your face, the looks of anger mixed in with disgust, and not just anger, hatred. You despised me. The, way, the look on your face. <laughs> oh, man. The look on you. <laughs> it was just so, it was just... Uh, it was just comedy gold. It was glorious. That was glorious. Okay, Gingy? You're not glorious, Gingy, but that comedy was fucking glorious, man. I laughed and I laughed and I re I replayed that I don't know how many times. I, I'm not kidding. I might sound like I am obsessed. Uh, they're not obsessed. OCD or just insane. But I played some of those clips 20 times, I bet you. I just, I, I just kept laughing. I just kept laughing and laughing, and I needed a good laugh. And man, thank you for the, for the good laughs, brother. Brother, thank you, brother. That was just... I'm being, I'm being a bit condescending and a bit sarcastic. You are a fucking asshole, you know. You are a creepy boy, and uh, you have anger issues. You're deranged, and you're narcissistic. But the fact that I triggered you... To, to point and wag your finger in your self-righteousness and your arrogance and the look of disgust and despising me, hatred and anger and everything mixed all together on your face was just a, <laughs> a fucking, oh man. It was the funniest shit that I, I, I've, it's been many months, I can't even remember the last thing that was that funny. It was hilarious. I wish I could make content. I'm trying to with my parody videos and stuff, but maybe people are laughing really hard at some of I hope you are. hope you get a good laugh about 
the parody Yon Levi's videos and stuff like that. But that Gingy cracked me up so fucking hard. I, my ribs hurt. My stomach, I literally thought, you know, I don't know if I thought I was going to pull a rib or rib cage, but I was laughing so hard that it hurt my side. I was like, damn, this is hilarious. He's really fucking pissed. And it's just... Oh, man, <laughs> I triggered you so fucking bad. Uh, I just, <laughs> you got triggered so, f you, Gingy, you got triggered beyond triggered. You got so fucking triggered, man. It's just, uh, that was the best. That was, that was the best. That was the best. Uh, <clears throat> I'm glad you made that video and you posted it. And, uh. No wonder you got so many views on that, because that was freaking hilarious. And the way you accused me of being a liar, and you accused me of doing things for views, you accused me of so much false shit. Everything you said was false. But the wagging, the way you wagged your finger, and your look of anger, hatred, disgust, all that stuff, where I know you can't stand me. And I know, I know you, you think you're moral, and you think that you're spiritual, you're a fucking demon, dude. You're a complete narcissist. You're so fucked up. And uh, you talking about boobs now and being spiritual, your latest video? Dude, you're going to be sealed in here. You're not spiritual. So it's just a joke when you talk about spiritual. You're a complete narcissist. You want to control others. And what they are able to say. Anything that you, you, you don't ever think that what you're doing is insulting, harmful, hateful, etc. But you call others bull bullies and you say they're harassing. You, you cry victim as you're lashing out at people. You're fucked up. You're, you're a total narcissist. You're a complete narcissist. I don't care about anyone else. It's obvious. I can't imagine a girl wanting you to date you, to sleep with you. I would bet you're a virgin. You'd have to be. What woman would want you? You know? It's not me saying that just to be hurtful. I'm trying to be truthful. Really? Dude, you have major issues, not just with me, but with women. You have major issues with women, dude. It's obvious. And I'm talking about more than looks. I think you hate women. I really do. I think you have issues, psychological like issues with women. Not just, oh, women aren't attracted to you. You have issues. So anyway, I'm going to end this video though because I could, I could probably talk about that freaking gingy clown. But uh, wow, Carrot Top. He's like Carrot Top's bigger evil twin brother or something from a parallel universe. He's just fucking... But he can be so amusing and it's just like, Still not enough, though. You're amusing, but it doesn't offset the evil. You're still fucking evil, and you're still getting sealed in here. So I think I can end this video that way, where, you know, I doubt he'll watch this much. He doesn't seem to watch anything and study and listen and understand what people are saying. He just wants to slander and lie about people the way narcs do. So I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching, everyone, and good night.